All right, welcome back to the sportsbackroom.com. We're here with Pierre Garçon, starting wide receiver for the Washington Redskins. Hail to the Redskins. Uh, <laughs> uh, this interview is about just the story of Pierre Garçon. I mean, I, I've i heard bits and pieces about it, but I, I wanted to um, go a little deeper and we want to figure out how literally came from nowhere, you know, to just, one of the the best receivers in the game today. Pierre, welcome back to the show. Or I guess welcome to the show, I should say. I appreciate it. Appreciate it, man. Glad to be on. So, here, I have a question. It'll be, it'll be the, uh, the first question. How many, <laughs> like, are you one of those, your, your last name, what is that C called in French? What is that C called? It's a Sedeli. It's a, it's a French letter, I assume. It makes everything sound like an S. Well, it makes the, that letter sound like an S. Huh. Do you get, was, it, was it like a big deal to have that put on your jersey? Because I remember, I think it was like preseason. I was like, who is this Garcon? Garcon? Is that a French symbol on the back of... I mean, was, is that a big deal as far as equipment men saying, wait... I have to special order this. What is it? What do you call it? Sedeli? Sedeli, Sedeli. Um, they, they didn't give me a hard time about it. The first time I asked about it, they thought I was playing. They, they, they was like, I got to see if it's um for sure. And then they can they can make whatever they want to make, you know. So well, after after I got it made, it was it was all good after that. But um, once you once I asked for it, they they did question. They're like, huh? What is that? <laughs> and then they fixed it up. Okay, okay, yeah, that was that one just popped in my head. I was like, wait a minute, that's not on my keypad. But uh, all right. uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, so let's let's start let's start back in in high school. You went to high school in, or you're from Florida, correct? Yes, West Palm Beach, Florida. Okay, now Florida is one of the perennial hotbeds of football. Um, how did you – I mean, how did you play? How did you do in high school, and were you highly recruited coming out? Um, in high school, I was good in high school, but um, I barely played. I played varsity my last two years, um, and then I played tight end my last two years. So, you know, I just played tight end just to get on the field, just to be out there to help the team. Um, I was good. Our, my team wasn't that good. My team didn't have a history of being good, so that didn't help us. We went to the playoffs and lost – my senior year, lost in the first round of the playoffs. But um, we we had talent, but we just never had the history of it being a good team. Um, didn't get heavily recruited out of high school because I didn't have the, the NCAA clearinghouse um, qualifications. So that didn't help me as, as much as I thought I needed or wanted, as much as I wanted. So found other ways to get to college and play football. Hmm. Now you chose to go to Norwich University. Where where is Norwich University? Uh, Norwich University was the only school that really chose me. They 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 really wanted me. They were very interested. Um, so I decided, hey, these guys really want me, so I might as well go there. Norwich is up in Vermont, up in Northfield, Vermont. Um, very very far from Florida. Yeah, let's. Let's take a second now. You're from West Palm Beach, and you're essentially going to, I don't even know what to call it. Let's just say the cold the cold area of the country. <laughs> oh, yeah, very cold, very cold. Okay, how, I mean, were you, was it like, did you just go up there like, man, I'm here, I'm here to just play ball, make a name for myself, and leave? Or, you know, I'm just I'm trying to get to the league. Like, what was your mindset, um, you know, stepping into Vermont. My mindset was um, to try to get into the NFL. That was that was always my mindset to always try to make it to the NFL. But I was going up there to go to school to learn to to basically get an education. You know, and, and then football would be an added bonus. But you know, it all fell into place for me. I just just played football and went to school and got did schoolwork and and, and got better at football. Got better at my schoolwork and. And then just fell into place for me. So you you were only at uh, uh, 
Norwich for what? A, one one season, one academic year. One academic year, yeah. And you transferred to, to Mount Vernon or Mount Vernon, Mount Union. Why did you transfer to Mount Union? Yeah, transferred to Mount Union. Um, went to Mount Union because a buddy of mine had went there before me. He told me about Mount Union, and I, was, I did some research on Mount Union and um, checked it out. And they seem to be a pretty good school and a pretty good football team. And why not? Now they didn't. I mean, they have a good. They they had a good team, two-time champion. I'm guessing they never asked you to play tight end, or you didn't need to ever play tight end for them or anything like that, right? No, after high school, that was my last time playing tight end. I played tight end in high school just to just to be a third receiver to get out there on the field, just to just to get out there on the field, really. So what was it? I mean, you what was it like playing at Mount Union? Mount Union, uh, refresh us what. I know that they reworked the divisions in the past couple of years, but what was it like on that level, just playing ball? I um, know it was cool. It was a uh, very fun playing out there. We had a great time. We won games. That always makes everything great. We, we, we you know, we did a lot more things in Division Three, other Division typical other three typical Division Three schools. When you're winning, you, know, you get a lot of bonuses and um, a lot of a lot of bonus um, trips and um, playoffs and stuff. And a lot of fans love us continue to win and continue to do great things. So it was a good time. We had it. I enjoyed my time at Mount Union. Now, okay, and I haven't really talked. I've talked to a couple college champions at different levels and different sports. What is it like to win a championship in college? I was very, it's very, very rewarding, very fun. You, know, you work all summer, all off season for, for the chance to, to win the championship and for it to finally happen. It's a, it's a it's a relief and it's a it's a sense of accomplishment. You know, making setting out a goal and actually reaching that goal, you know, with the guys that you've been working with all summer, all off season, it's a it's a great feeling, amazing feeling. Yeah, now you, you also ran track while you were there, correct? Yep, ran track in um Mount Union as well. Yep. Was that was that uh how do I say this? Was that a uh I get to the NFL type plan, or was it um, just something that you were good at and you had fun? You might as well do it as well. Yeah, it was. I was. It was a way of helping me keep my speed up. We actually, you know, ran track at Mount Union. We actually won a championship in the four by one um, in college. It was just another way to help me keep my speed up. You know, you can never be too fast. Were you what? Uh, were you the anchor, or were you one of the other guys? Was I the second? Was you the anchor on the four by one? Um, on the four, I ran the second leg on the four by one. Um, what else on the? I ran the second leg on the four by one. Um, I ran the hundred and the two hundred, and and that was it, really. Okay. Now, before when we talked about leaving high school and going to college, you were like, you know, I, I just want to try to get to the league. I want to try to get to the NFL. Um, after your senior year, headed into pro days and combines and all that, like, um, before we even talk about that, what was your, how did, like, what was, what was your gut feeling? Were you, were you just, like, anticipating the next chapter, the next phase of your career, or were you, were you not even thinking about it as far as, like, you know, what may happen? You were just like, I need to get to work. Um, I was I was hoping for the best and preparing for the worst. I was um hoping that I could make it to the NFL. I know anything, nothing was guaranteed. Um, I know, you know, just have to be prepared for, for whatever that um happens, but I was setting myself up for 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 if in case the NFL didn't work, I was setting myself up to, to work, um do to do other jobs to to make a living. So Tell us about Pro Day. Uh, what was that like? Um, I actually Pro Day was a pre Pro Day was a lot easier than um than any other Division three or um guys that would usually have Pro Days. Or Pro Day would mean everything. Pro, I did my workout at the combine. I did everything at the combine. Did um did well at the combine. So my Pro Day was basically all skill drills, and I did all that. And um it was. It was a lot easier and, and less nerve wracking than, than the other guys have because I didn't have to run the forty, I didn't have to do the shoulder drill, I didn't have to worry about much. 
just had to so, go out run routes and, and catch catch the ball. So you got invited to the uh, the combine in Indianapolis. Yep. What? <laughs> okay, that's a whole other list of questions. Well, not a list, but a whole other couple of questions. I mean, let like let's reminisce for us a little bit. So you get you get to Indy. You know you you know that you're basically you're going to be compared against I don't know how many receivers or how many other guys that they have. Um, you know, you get you get your your set of gear with your number and your position group on it. Um, I mean, I'll just be real. Like, are you scared? Are you worried? Like, what's what's, uh, what's going through your head? Uh, you know, coming coming into Indianapolis with um, you know being invited to the combine, you always always nervous and scared. But but once it's time to perform, you know, you try to to do as much as you can to prepare to do your best. And after that, you just have to really just let yourself do what you do best and just go out there and run and, and and you know, just perform and play football. It's nothing different. It's nothing, nothing that you haven't done. You just have to go out there and do it when, when it's most important. It was um, it was nervousness, but once you got, got going, things got a lot easier. Now, Obviously, there's the you know the weigh-ins, the workouts, the the 40s, um, the position uh, excuse me, the position drills. What was what were the team interviews like? I mean, was that was that just like <laughs> surreal? Like, was it one of those like, wow, he really just they really just asked me that? <laughs> uh, it was it was it was nothing crazy. They didn't ask me crazy questions. You know, the teams weren't really interested in me. They were just, um, oh yeah, you went to Division Three. I've, I've heard about you. And it was it wasn't nothing crazy. It wasn't nothing out of nowhere. And they're just typical. How'd you end up at Marion? Why'd you transfer? Why'd you end up at Marion? Um, what you know? Um, very simple questions. Nothing. Nothing. Crazy that that would be alarming. Hmm. Um, did any you know? I interviewed uh, Anthony Adams a couple couple weeks ago. He said he was, uh, he was like, "Well, you know, I was told going into the draft, you know, the teams that are all over you that said that they want you, they'll ne- they don't want you. You know, uh, w- were there any teams that were just like, oh." Yeah, we're so impressed. We're so impressed. We'll be in touch. We'll be in touch. Was there any like? Because um, it's almost like it's a shell game, right? No, well, maybe not a shell game. But it's almost like, you know, a just a, a covert, you know, you know, national seekers type of uh, you know uh, deal where it's like, all right, he's moving up our board, but we can't we can't let him know that, you know, necessarily. We can't let obviously other teams know that. Was it was it weird in that regard, or was it just Simple, straightforward questions. You know, they they ask, they dug a little bit, but that was that. Um, yeah, the teams are very secretive. They never, they never tell you what they're thinking, or but they 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 play a lot of mind games and try to try to figure out what's going on. But um, you know, the teams with with me, I know I wasn't going in the first round. So if you happen to fall in their lap, they'll take you. But it's not like yeah, we. We will we'll call you. Well, they say they'll call you, but, you know, I'm sure they say that to a lot of guys that they'll call them and, you know, look forward to to hearing from them and we really like you. But, you know, a lot of teams tell you that and only only one team can pick you. So you, you just you just take it with a smile and say, I'll be looking forward to it. It was the, the teams don't know who they're going to draft until it's their pick on the board. Mm. Now let's fast forward a little bit to uh, draft day. Um, how was that? Did you have like the little draft party set up with family and friends, or was it one of those deals where you were just? Uh, I mean, I don't know about your agent situation and all that, but you were just like, man, if I get drafted, great. If I don't, great. But you know, I, I'm just gonna be waiting by the phone. Um, draft day was, was was fun. It was interesting. I had friends and family. We you know, we thought about everything to do, what not to do, but we were like, you know, you never, you don't get drafted twice, so you better be prepared to, to just, you know, have a good time. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't happen, we'll just use that as motivation to work hard in camp and work hard to to get to where we want to go. But um, 
we had a, a family and friends and family over watching the TV, just waiting, just waiting for that phone to ring, and we all just sat by, <laughs> just waiting for that phone call. So let's, I mean, it's almost like I want to steal your thunder right now. Tell me who picked you and what your initial reaction was. Um, the Indianapolis Colts picked me. They, I didn't hear much from them with the interview process or anything like that, but they, they picked, they called me. I, I spoke to, to Coach Dungey. He was telling me, you know, we're going to take you with this pick and, um, uh, you know, hey, we're looking forward to seeing you come up in the next week for Ricky Minicamp or Ricky, yeah, Ricky Minicamp. And I'm looking forward to having you on the team. So I was like, I'm ready, Coach. I appreciate it. Looking forward to it. And I'm ready to work, ready to ready to make things happen. So right after you got off the phone call with uh, Coach Dungy, um, was your mind spinning just as far as, like, who you're going to be playing with, who's going to be your head coach. I mean, was it like that? Was it just like, you know, you, you press, you, you hang up and you just let out this, you know, this war cry to the rest of the room, like, ah! You know, was, I mean, take us back. Um, I was actually I was actually on the phone with him while, while, while he picked me on while it showed across the TV. So everybody got excited and then, you know, I kind of said, yeah, Coach, um, we ready to go. And then it got real loud and I couldn't hear him. And he said, I'll talk to you soon. I'll talk to you later. And we get all the information that we need. And then, uh, you know, everybody just got excited all around me. And then my phone just absolutely just blew up because everybody heard the news. Everybody heard it on TV. And then I couldn't even use my phone for about an hour because there was so much message coming in, so much phone calls. Everybody wanted to do interviews and things like that. But um, it was just an exciting moment. It's just everybody just just happy for me. It was like, you know, we – Spoke on that we've been waiting on. We received it, and then mm-hmm. you know it couldn't happen to to to, to a better to for, for, to a, from a better team. You know, we were, Indianapolis had a great history. They've always made it to the playoffs. You know, with Peyton, Reggie, Marvin, those guys were were amazing. We we then we thought about that. They were like, well, I guess you got to make the team now. You know, Reggie, <laughs> Marvin, and those other teams. <laughs> I guess you got to go out there and make the team. So they're like, yeah, you know, definitely definitely do everything I can to to make the team. Definitely. Give my all on on special teams and um, anything and everything that they ask me to do, I'll go out there <laughs> and give my best. So I have written down here. Um, I mean, and you you said some of the names, but I have written down here: Peyton Manning, Marvin Harrison, Alex Clark, Tony Dungy, yeah. Reggie Wayne. I mean, I'm probably omitting a couple names, a couple coaches there. Um, Share with us just what it's like to be, I don't want to call it a system because that's not fair in, the, in this regard, but, like, what is it like to just, I mean, there's probably four off, there's four five Hall of Famers there. You and Lizzie maybe one day, you know? Like, what is it like to, to step into a situation where, um, yeah, you're a rookie, you're, you're, the, you're the new guy, but you're just surrounded by guys who are, very, very good. I mean, did they take you under their wing? Like, what? Well, like, take us back. Um, it was it was amazing to walk in that situation. Good thing they didn't need me to perform right away to to help the team. So I actually sat back and watched those guys and how they worked and how how they became the place that they are. Those guys really worked hard. They studied. They they focused in meetings. They took notes. They worked hard. They took practice reps seriously. They ran hard. They did everything hard. So that was that was on Sunday. It showed up very easy, very simple for them. So I learned that from them, and then I try to use that. I use that every day towards my game, and try to use that to help me get better at what I do. So it was a, a blessing to to work with those guys, to see those guys and to see how they did the right things the right way and when they really needed to do it and to see how they turned out to be successful. It was a, it was a, it was an amazing learning opportunity for me, and I took everything I could from those guys. Now, as a, as a former DB, I'm thinking to myself, okay, this dude gets to learn from Marvin Harrison, who low-key is one of the best receivers to play in the last 20 years. Now, not even low-key. Let's just say he is one of the top five receivers to play in the last 20 years. And Reggie Wayne, 
What I mean, you don't have to get into specifics, but what are some of the tricks of the trade that they they taught you? Because to me, I'm thinking to myself, like, man, like, <laughs> my my head will explode. Like, what he has so he has so much knowledge, you know, in that in that group. How did you tap into it? Ah, uh, it was just watching films with those guys and um, seeing how they worked. That yeah, there was no real real trick. They didn't do nothing special. They just really worked hard every day. They they practiced hard. They did their drills hard. They and they were consistently good at it. That's what the number one thing that I learned from them. Everything they did was fast and hard and consistently doing it well. They they hated dropping the ball. They hated having the mystery. They hated running the wrong routes. They hated. They hated being covered by the defenders, so they worked hard at it to to, to perfect it and to continue to, to 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 get better. And that's what I learned from those guys, and that's what I'm continuing trying to do every day while I'm working to get to hopefully one day to their level. Now, when when did you start to I hate saying it like this, but I think it's the best way of saying it. When did you start to get it? Not just special teams, not just, you know, work habits, not just, you know, things that come with being a professional football player. But when did you start to get it and start to – when did it start to click for you mentally? Um, I, I understood it a lot better my second year after, you know, spending a year learning, spending a year watching, taking notes, and getting better at it. I learned that – um. I, my guy, I took a step forward my second year. My second year, I was, I can definitely say I, I, I did a lot better. I understood the game a lot better and, and continued to grow from it. So that was when I really started to elevate as a as a football player. Um, now, you're, you're a track guy. You're, well, I don't want to say you're a track guy because that's, that labels you as something that maybe isn't as complete as you would want it to be. But you you have, let's just say you have above average speed and you have great hands and you get to work with Marvin. You get to work with Reggie. And, you know, you, you're saying that, you know, they didn't, they didn't really do anything special, you know, or they didn't really have any tricks to trade. They just worked hard and they worked to get uncovered and they worked to, you know, read defenses. Um, what what is your what is your forte? Like what what do you identify yourself as? What type of receiver do you identify yourself as? Um, sure. I try to be a big play receiver. That's that's you know one of the most exciting things about it. you know when a receiver that can that can take it to the house from anywhere in the field. That's what I try to. Try to make. I try every time I catch the ball. I try to try to take it to the house, no matter where I'm at on the field. I try to try to get into the end zone, regardless if it's a, a five yard pass or a, a, a deep ball. I just try to get to the end zone on every play, and that's that's I think is my <laughs> my skill. Hmm. Yeah, I mean we'll we'll get into it down the line, but I remember last Thanksgiving. <laughs> that was a great play. That was a great. It was a great catch for one, but it was a great play. But we'll we'll get into that later. Uh, let's let let's talk about the Super Bowl. Let's talk about the run into the Super Bowl and just um. I want to probably start like the end of the season and then just like you know the wild card round and then the divisional. Just what is it like? It's your I think it's what, your third year or the fourth year in the league. Like it, it's all your it's like you said your second year it started to click. Um, you have great um, teammates. You have a great, um, let's just say, uh, uh, atmosphere and environment to uh, succeed in. What was it like leading up to the Super Bowl? I was amazing. It was it was, it was living a dream. You know, you you actually playing deep in the playoffs and you get a chance to go to the Super Bowl. Everybody dreams about going to the Super Bowl and you know actually get to actually do it. Going to the Super Bowl was, you know, everything was great. <laughs> there was nothing that could go wrong around that time. It was just you're going to the Super Bowl. You know, the, the, what else matters? Nothing, nothing else matters. This is this is what you work for forever. Headed to the Super Bowl, like <laughs> not everybody can say that they're going to play in the Super Bowl. Man, it was 
it was just amazing. And then the Super Bowl was down in South Florida, so that made it extra special. You know, I had my family, my sisters, my mom to come to the game. That was like the second NFL game was the Super Bowl. So everything, everything was just, just amazing. It was just living a dream. Wow, I didn't, I didn't realize that was like a, uh, maybe not a homecoming, but that was definitely a, a great time for for the family and friends to come see you play. Yeah, very, very good time. Very great time. Now, the, the actual Super Bowl. Let's talk about. Let's talk about that. I think one of one of the moments that always blows my mind is I I think about it from a removed position, whether it's the first kickoff or or whatever. It's all, well, definitely the first kickoff. There's just that sea of flashing cameras. Like, were you, was it almost like an out-of-body experience? I mean, you were like, yeah, nothing to go wrong. You're going to the Super Bowl. But was it like, man, wow, let me let me take a moment to, like, you know, breathe. Like, how, how was it game day and actually playing? I, I'm guessing that once you guys started playing, I mean, it was another game that was very important, but it's just another game. It was, um... <clears throat> It was very, very surreal, you know. It was um it was it was <laughs> it was awesome. The first kick off, you look back, you'd be like, Wow, you know <laughs> it does it is a lot of flashes when you're when you're looking at it. It is it it does really happen. You know, those are just cameras and stuff like that. That's <laughs> that's making those um lights flash. But it was that whole time, that whole that whole period is it was all just magnified with excitement. It was just, you know, from going out there to warm up for the Super Bowl, you know, everything's perfect. You know, just being out there, just catching the moment of, you know, I'm warming up for the Super Bowl. I'm driving to the stadium for the Super Bowl game. I'm, you know, uh, everything was wrapped around the Super Bowl. I'm eating this before the Super Bowl. It's just super, you know, unrealistic that you can, you know, Think about everything. You're doing everything the normal, but it's right before the Super Bowl. It's at the Super Bowl. It's you know, it's the Super Bowl. It's it's just the Super Bowl just magnifies everything and excite makes everything exciting. It's it's it's, it's crazy, but it was a wonderful, wonderful, you know, wonderful thing that you know that we'll remember forever and and, and try to tell that story forever. Now we'll, we'll definitely uh, talk about this when we start talking about the Redskins. Um, did you, like, I don't know how to say this. Have you, like, sort of promised yourself, like, I need to make it back? Like, I mean, that sounds, that's almost like a trick question. But, I mean, what's your thoughts on on the net, like, the next time that you play in the Super Bowl? I'm um, sure. Every year I try to make it back. That's um, that's that's what everybody plays for us, to, to try to make it back. Every year we, we – <laughs> That's the goal is to make it back there. If you don't plan on making it back, that's that's already a failure right there. But um, shoot, <laughs> I always want to. We we'll always want to make it back. Now, there's anything else is is, is basically a failure. Mm-hmm. Um. So after, I mean, unfortunately, you guys were not able to uh, close that game out, and you guys didn't win. Um, what, this is sort of a tough question, but what is it like, um, just from a player's perspective to not, you know, to not win the Lombardi, um, and to just, obviously, you know, you lick your wounds for a, for a time, you know, for a short time, but like, what is your mindset? What was your mindset that immediate off season? Like just going into the new, the new frontier of like, okay, it didn't, it didn't work out, but this is what we're going to do now. We're going to get back. But, I mean, go ahead. I mean, let me not tell your story. Yeah, it's um, it's, it's tough, especially, you know, not winning a Super Bowl or not made it to the playoffs or whatever happens. You always, you know, we got to reevaluate the season, reevaluate yourself, and um, look forward to the new year and see what you can get better at and what you can work on to hopefully get you to that Super Bowl, to get you to your goal. Um, it's it's always about reevaluating yourself and putting your best foot forward and working towards towards the goal, working towards it. That's the that's what you got to approach every off season as, um, you know, to get better at certain things or everything or whatever you want to work at, and to to put yourself in the best position to be 
at the Super Bowl to be the best player you can be. Okay. Now, the next part is the part where I definitely definitely want to hear your take, uh, just your perspective. Free agency. Um, just take us back to just what that was like for you. I mean, I, I mean, I think, I think to a certain extent, you know, the, the media pumps out this story of, you know, there's GMs in the bushes at, you know, 11:45, different <laughs> guys, you know, I believe March 1st, or whatever it is, every year. And I'm not saying that's not true. I'm just saying. I can't see that being true for a lot of the guys. I mean, what was it like for you? Um, it was uh, interesting. It was interesting. You know, you always hear a lot of things. Glad to hear, hear a lot of things of what teams that are interested, what, um, you know, where you might end up at. But um, you never know until you get that phone call or or what's really going on until, you say, after they're allowed to contact you. But it's uh it's it's hectic. It's it's <laughs> it's kinda like traffic and everybody's calling you <laughs> calling you, um, to to try to sign with them but you know, you can only sign with one team and then once the report get out that you sign with one team or you agree to contract with one team, everybody calls your phones again and try to get interviews and try to like, congratulate you and things like that. But um it's it's a very, very it's a recruiting process. You, you get people you hear a lot of rumors, you hear a lot of stories. And um, you try to figure out the best place for you and your family and your future. So, did you? I mean, obviously, you and your agent had a game plan. We don't, we're not trying to get into the game plan, but did you have targets of what where you want to go? Was it was it one of those things where it's like, all right, I want to play in like Houston's, for example, sake. I want to play in the West Coast offense. I want to play with a team that has a good offensive line. You know, like I want to play in a team that's um, warm weather. I mean, down the line, different. I mean, not too too stringent, but did you have like a criteria in your mind um, as the pro- the process started? Um, no, not really. We we <laughs> we couldn't pick the team that we wanted to go to. We had to the team really had to show interest. And us, and then we had to make the best decision for for us and the team for for whatever you know for whatever situation best fits you know it was whatever team that really wanted us and what team that we really wanted to go to. So obviously, that one one of those teams um, was the uh, the Washington Redskins. Um, I guess I'm, I want to ask, like, tell us. You know, let us know how what what made you say you know what that's where I want to be. What were some um, of the things? Soon as soon as um free agency opened up, they were the first team to call me. Um, that was always that's that was also that was one of the most important things. They like soon as it opened, they were really the first one to call me. And then I didn't even pick up because I didn't recognize the number, which you know at that point I didn't think about you know every team calling me from different places, but um. It was just, you know, it was just um, just didn't didn't put two and two together, so I didn't even pick up. And then another team called me, um, I picked up, but it was um, it was another team. Don't want to say the name. And then I got off the phone with those guys real quick, and I told them to call. I told, I told them to call my agent. <laughs> I told them to call my agent. And then um, Coach Shannon called my, me again from another phone number, and then I picked up. And then and I was like, wow, you know, these guys must really want me. So then you know, I started talking to Coach Shannon, and I told him to call my agent. Well, my agent, actually, my agent was on the phone with, um, I think, their front office, with the Washington Redskins front office, and you know they were just showing a lot of interest. And and at the end of the day, they they showed more interest than any other team. So, I mean, <laughs> this sounds like a very basic remedial statement statement to make, but you pretty much ended up going to the team that wanted you the most. It wasn't really about, I mean, maybe the other the other factors that, you know, any any of us could think of um, helped, but for you, I mean, the key that opened the door uh, before you stepped into it was that they really wanted you. That's, you know, that's you want to be where you want it, and, you know, you can always grow from there if they really want you. 
see you work extra hard for people that want you instead of working hard for you that doesn't want you. Okay. Now we're gonna we're gonna make a little bit of a transition here because I want I would definitely definitely want to talk about uh, the upcoming season and just uh, just your perspective as far as all that goes. But I, I want to take time to talk about talk about Haiti. Uh, you're you're of Haitian descent, correct? Yes. Now, what is it like growing up in West Palm Beach? Um, and being from Haiti or Cuba or Puerto Rico or whatever else, but I mean specifically being of Haitian descent. Um, it was nothing different because down in South Florida, there's a lot of different cultures. So you know, it wasn't out of the ordinary to be from somewhere else. It wasn't weird to be from somewhere else. It was it was okay. You know, like you said, there's Cubans, Puerto Ricans, Mexicans, Dominicans, Haitians. People from all over the the, the West Indies, um, you know, um, migrate to South Florida. So it wasn't Jamaicans, everybody. It wasn't nothing weird about it. it we, we There's a lot of Haitians in our community, a lot of Haitians where I'm from, my sisters, my family, friends, Haitians all over. So it was, it was, it was normal. Uh, in 2010, there was that horrific earthquake that... Um, caused flooding and just mass destruction. I mean, what was your, where were you um, when that happened, and what was your initial uh, reaction? Um, I was in Indianapolis when I when I got the phone call, but um, when I first heard about it, I was I was like earthquake in Haiti. Yeah, that doesn't happen often. That's not common. And I thought I thought a hurricane or, or a tornado or something like that, but an earthquake, you know. I, I, I had to check the news to make sure they're talking about Haiti. I was like, you know, earthquakes don't happen often, so it, it might be your wrong place or a different place. But um, it was it was true. And then ever since then, I was stuck to the TV watching the news on what's going on in Haiti. It was I was in Indianapolis, just just trying to find out more information on what's going on, what's going on out there, like how did this happen, <laughs> why did this happen, where did this happen at? You know, trying to gather information as much as I could. Now you you did end up uh, going down there for uh, relief efforts, correct? Oh yeah, yeah, been down there um, a few times um, ever since the earthquake. But um, yeah, went down there after the season and and tried to help out as much as I can. Now, well, having actually been down there, what what are, what are the, some of the difference between you know what's covered covered in the media and what's you know really going on? Um, it's what's being covered in the media. I, it's it's hard to say because they cover a lot in the media, but it's still a lot more that needs to be done. So it's 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 the media is doing what they can, what they're what they're keen to do, what they're trying to do. But there's still a lot of people that need it, that needs help, that need help even before the earthquake. It's just you know now they just hear more about it because of the earthquake and, and more cameras are down there, but um, there's still a lot that needs to be done. It's a slow process. The recovery is still slow, but it, it's on its way, but it's not as fast as, as we would hope as, you know, people that helped out, but um, everything has a reason, and it's 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 out of our control, so it's, it's just we just keep hoping and praying that it, it gets done. Now, you're saying that some of the things need to happen, have been needed to happen since before the earthquake. What are some of those things? Just to, for some of those, some of us out there who, you know, we heard a couple of years ago, 2010, oh, there's an earthquake, but we haven't checked back since 2010. I mean, what are what are some of the things that will help uh, Haiti progress past um, that disaster? Um, it's it's a lot that needs to be done, but it's just. You know, it's 2013 now, and people are still living in tents. It's, it's just, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy to to be living in tents in the year 2013, especially with a country that's so close to, to everything, to, to America, that's so close to Jamaica, the Dominican Republic, and, you know, to have all these nice places around it and for people to live in tents, it's, it's you know, just... 
unheard of. It's just not normal. You know, a lot of people don't have electricity. A lot of people don't have running water. It's just those things have become the norm that, you know, you can imagine living without it. And, you know, there's people that doesn't even know what a shower looks like, that doesn't even know, that doesn't eat every day, that doesn't have the human rights that we take for granted every day. Mm. Um, that's, yeah, I mean, it is 2013, so that's some of, yeah, a lot of those things need to need to be addressed. Um, you, you got to work with uh, former President Bill Clinton down there, right? Um, yeah, he's done, he's done a lot of great things down there to help out to help out in Haiti. He's um, he's one of the one of the big person that's trying to make the process work, trying to make you know get Haiti back on its feet. He's been very influential down there, and he's been doing a lot of great things down there. Awesome. Um, let's see. Um, what, is there? I guess I guess you sort of answered it, but I mean, is there anything else that uh, what can we do to help? Not just you know what needs to be done. What are some of the things that we we can do to start to to help? I, I mean, I don't want to necessarily call them our neighbors, but they kind of are. They kind of are our neighbors, you know. I mean, they're in the same same hemisphere and, and all that. So, like, what what are some of the things that we can do, even if it's small? Um, shoot, the most important thing, I, 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 not the most important thing, but I think if you visit Haiti, you would, you would help, you would help, you know, you would help yourself, you'd appreciate life a lot more, and if you visit Haiti, you know, see the, their world where they're living at, you know, you appreciate your life and you appreciate their life too as well, to see what they gone through and then and it, it'll change you and it'll you'll become a better person by just visiting Haiti. So I think, you know, if you take a trip down there, it'll be very positive. It'll be a win win situation. You'll see what's going on. You'll learn about Haiti, learn about the culture, learn about what's going on and, and, and seeing it for yourself and visiting there is always a little bit better than just sending money and just sending money blind without even knowing what's really going on. And seeing what's going on down there, I think you will be attached more to it, attached more to the people, and then everybody would appreciate, you know, you visiting them, and and you will see life from a different point of view, and you know, it'll make your life a lot better, and it would be just a a, a very remember memorable trip for 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 everybody. So you're, I mean, that's a good point. You're you're saying don't just don't just cut the check, just. Yeah, I mean, obviously cut a check, but take your check there. <laughs> like, go see, uh, yeah. go you don't see even what's have happening. To, you don't have, you don't even have to donate any money. Just go out there and just help out on your own. You don't even have to. We don't even. We're not even asking for money. Just, just come, come lend a helping hand. Come help us rebuild, lady. Come help us. You know, come help us. Come come enjoy our country with us. Just come visit. Just come see what we're doing. Come see where we're living, how we're living. And, and you know, you really, really, you'll learn a lot and you really become, you, you, you'll leave a better person. Awesome. Have, now, have you gone down there with any uh, any NFL guys, any teammates or anything like that? Um, I haven't been in a year. Last time I was there was last year, 4th of July weekend. I haven't been in a year. Um, I'll be definitely be going back soon after the season, but um, um, I'll definitely, you know, kind of take some of the guys down there with me. But um, it'll be, it'll be. I have taken guys before, but um, not NFL guys, but friends that are that are more flexible to to travel. But um, it's, it's always a good trip when I go. Okay, that's awesome. Um, Okay, um, so from from humble beginnings, from you know not being too heavily recruited to going to you know the mountains of Vermont, and then going to Mountain Union, and then getting drafted, and um, getting to play with some of the best offensive players, uh, obviously in our generation. Um, what are some of the uh, lessons that you've learned? Just and in and in, 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 into a 
to, to pull into tow what happened with Haiti and being able to go back and being able to, I mean, like you were saying, you're not even, they're not even asking for money, just lend a helping hand. What are some of the lessons that you've learned along the way? Um, shoot. Learn to really put all your effort into what you want to accomplish. That's the number one thing. If you put all your time and energy and focus into what you really want to accomplish, it could happen. It could definitely happen because, like I said, I came from the mountains of Vermont, from from a Division three to, to playing in the NFL, and, and I saw what it took to get there, and, and I continued to work at it, and, and it happened. It was, it was a dream come true. Hmm. Okay. Now the next part the next part of this interview um is gonna be kinda of interesting because I've never really done it before. But um just a disclaimer, my family huge Redskins fan. Huge. Huge. Um from the Gaithersburg area, they're like it's it's a big deal. They're excited. So I asked some of my uh my brothers, if uh, they had questions that they wanted to ask, so they are screened, they are good, but uh, I want—I just want to get your take. And you know, the cool thing about it is that this is—I think this is going to be interesting. Um, but without further ado, um, first question I have from from the fans, from the audience, if you will. Um, it's only been what one season with the Redskins, right? Yeah, so it's only been one season. What is your proudest moment as a Redskin? I'm making so it far, to the making making it to the playoffs. Um, you know, my first season here, making it to the playoffs. Hmm. Now, making it to the playoffs is huge, and I mean for the Redskins as well. Uh, it's been a while, so that's that. That's also awesome. Um, mm-hmm. uh, what What are some of your um, personal expectations? Well, let's do team and personal. So we'll start with team first. What are some of your expectations for this upcoming season? Shoot, Super Bowl, Super Bowl. That's the that's the reason we play this game. Now. Personal, I mean, what are there any not? I don't want to say statistical um, mile markers, but you said earlier in the interview that you're. I mean, you're a big play guy. Your point, whether it's a screen or a swing pass or a post or a dig or a smash, whatever, you're you're taking it to the house. <laughs> so, I mean, that's that's what you're trying to do. What are some of your personal goals? this year as as far as that receiver that you want to be identified as? Um there's no real personal goals. I I enjoy winning winning football games. That's that what that's what makes everybody feel better. When you win football games, no matter on what your stats is, stats are, you know, you feel better because the team won, you won, you know, your 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 victory, your you're victorious. So that's What's really most important, you know, at the end of the day, you can have a thousand yards, but if your team <laughs> loses every game, it really doesn't matter. Mm, very true. Um, now, those first two questions were from my uh, brother Pat. Brother Bobby, brother Bobby wants to know um, today. He told me, "Is it? Did you hear? Did you hear?" And I'm like, "No, I've been working all day. What do you mean? Did I hear?" It's like RG3 got cleared today, full clearance. You should ask Pierre about that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, what's your what's your what are your thoughts? Um, um, it's good that he's got clearance to play, but um, it's still early early in the year. You know, we don't really need um to rush rush him back out there to to get out there. It's um, you know, it's still early. We got a long time before the season start. We just have to. Just get them ready for mentally for the season start and get them get them physically in shape and they would be good to go. You know, it's a, it's a good sign to have them cleared, but um, we just have to, to still um, slowly get to it. All right, now these questions, for the record, are my questions. So, 
you don't like them, please let me know. <laughs> but what is trail camp like? You're a veteran now. You're a veteran now. You like, you know the offense. You know that you know it's just it, it is what it is. You're going to be away from home, away from you know the the comfortable surroundings of Redskins Park and all that for for a while. Um, does it? I don't want to say does it get old, but I mean, what's what's your mindset just as far as like? Is it a toleration of like the first couple weeks and you know the new guys and all? Is it one of those things where it's like you know you just got to get through it, or is it is it a, is it something different for you? Um, well, it's different because I'm I'm you know well last year something different because we had to learn a new offense and get um get together with you know new new teammates. So it was a it was growing. It was a growing. You know, growing atmosphere, so it wasn't like a headache or, you know, it wasn't like a tolerance to be there. It was, you know, we were learning and getting better at our skills and, and moving forward and, and getting better as a team. This year, we just think to keep continue doing the same thing. We, we're a young team. We have a lot of great players. We just have to keep getting familiar with each other and keep growing. It should be a, a smoother process. It should be, um, you know, a lot easier than last year, but we still have to get better and keep the grow. Yeah. Now you're you're apparently apparently you're not a, a big goal uh, oriented guy as far as personal personal stats or personal accomplishments, which is honestly I I totally agree with that. Do you, however, circle dates on the calendar or opponents or you know teams that you know for a fact, uh, whether it's a cornerback or a safety or a defense that you want to let's just you know politely say exploit. Do do you do you do that? No, I enjoy enjoy playing every Sunday whenever I get a chance. I enjoy being out there and um being able to play. So it was it was um it no not matter no matter who who we're playing is just looking forward to it. Just never get a chance to play out there. It's just it's a great moment to, to get to play out there on TV. All right, uh, before before we wrap up here, where where are some of the places that we can find you online so that we can connect with you and some of the things that you're doing? Um, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Pierre Garcon. My Facebook www dot um, facebook dot com slash Pierre Garcon. Instagram, it's good. I'm trying to try to keep it simple so everybody can get get me all in one place. Awesome, awesome. Well, Pierre, it's been a pleasure. I uh, I think it's cool that you uh, you went to to Vermont to play football to get to the league. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was it was it was worth it. <laughs> well. I appreciate you taking out time to do this interview, and um, I—I mean, it's—it's always cool to hear guys who just—I don't want to say humble, not not saying that you're not humble, but it's cool to see to to hear that guys have a perspective that is not, uh, let's just say, bland, and it's not like, oh yeah, you know, I got a scholarship here, got a scholarship there, you know, got an agent, and I got into league, and it's my fifth year, you know, like. Um, yeah, so you, you have a story that, that is that is unique and is awesome in that. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it a lot. All right, Pierre. Have a great night, and thanks for doing this interview. Thank you. I appreciate it a lot, man.